episode 46. You are listening to the new Glam Gal podcast, the podcast where style meets confidence. Conquer the frustration of trying on clothes and learn to dress and love the body you are in. There are no size or weight requirements here. I'm your host, Miss J. Join me, won't you? Hey, Glam Gal. Welcome back to the podcast. I remember a scene from one of my favorite movies, Amelie, and she has a moment where she kind of gets this moment of embarrassment and she falls into a puddle of water on the floor. I know that there's this phrase that you wish a hole in the ground would just swallow you up. I don't know if anyone's ever felt that kind of humiliation or embarrassment where you literally wish a hole in the ground would form and just take you, take you away and nobody noticed that you fell or tripped or flubbed in public in some way. I know we have all been there to some degree. There's these big embarrassing moments that we can recall. And there's thoughts that we have that we used to beat ourselves up with. I'm not exactly talking about those this week. I want to talk about all the little ways that we're hoping a hole in the ground will form and will become invisible. I want to talk about those little ways that we dress ourselves and hope of not being noticed. All the ways that we tone ourselves down. All the ways that we create little invisibility cloaks for ourselves. Now, a perfect example of this is when I had gained some weight after law school. I created a uniform for myself, as I want to do. I wore a cardigan and trousers with a blouse every single day. That sounds like a perfectly cute and reasonable outfit, except that I was using the cardigan as a kind of invisibility cloak. I was wearing ill-fitting cardigans so that I can cover up my large chest. I was wearing cardigans that were cropped in a certain way as to make me look boxier and rounder. I wasn't paying attention to the cut of my cardigan Because I was literally hoping that the cardigan would swallow me whole and take me away. Now, I know some of you may have your own version of your cardigan invisibility cloak. Or you're using baggy t-shirts as a means to hide your body. You're using ill-fitting bras as a way to make your breasts look a certain way so that they can become quote-unquote invisible. And we all have this secret hope that we too can become puddles of water and be whisked away in moments of embarrassment. So we use our clothing as a means to create this effect every day. And usually when we're trying to use our clothing as an invisibility cloak, it has the opposite intended effect. And instead of actually masking our bodies and hiding our bodies, we tend to make ourselves look larger than we actually are. And there's nothing wrong with appearing larger than you actually are. If your personality is looming larger than life, that's one thing. But if you're trying to make yourself smaller by wearing baggier clothing, you're actually appearing larger and it's having the exact opposite effect of what you hope. So this is mostly style related. So we're going to start with your style homework this week and then we'll go to mindset. I know that's a little bit opposite, but there's a reason for this. So when you wear baggy t-shirts, if you are large chested, guess what happens? You actually look larger on top. If you wear baggier clothing because you feel like your booty is too big or your hips are too big or your thighs are too big or your knees or your ankles or whatever body part you are picking on, you wear larger trousers that don't fit, guess what looks larger? Your bottom half. Now, I'm going to make this an absurd example because I want you to see how this might work. So let's say you're embarrassed that you have big feet. I have a size 10 feet. Even though I'm not particularly tall, I have large feet. If I were a size larger in my shoe, let's say I wore size 11 shoes because I was hoping and hiding my size 10 feet, guess what would happen? My size 10 feet would look that much larger than they actually are. And I know when you think about it in terms of shoes, it's sort of absurd. Like, well, of course it would look larger 
The same thing is happening with your blouses, your dresses, your jackets, your trousers. It looks larger than you're expecting. So when you're trying to hide and create your own form of invisibility cloaking with your clothing, it's actually making you look larger as opposed to making you invisible. And this may seem obvious, but I want you to think about that for my gals who are trying to hide their bodies behind larger than life clothing. It's not serving you. It's not giving you the intended effect that you're hoping for. And I know that may be really bad news because some of you are really committed to wearing clothing that doesn't fit you because you want to hide your body. And I get it. I've been there. I had my own cardigan invisibility cloak and it didn't make me invisible. It made my chest look larger, which is exactly what I didn't want to happen. Another way we do this in terms of our outward appearance is we slouch. Um, This is particularly true of my gals with big breasts who developed very early and were embarrassed about their chest size. I'm one of them. So whenever we got embarrassed about our cup size or there was someone who noticed how large our chest had become, we instantly started to do the slouch crouch thing where we pull our chest inward and backward and we slouch heavily, uh, hoping by some way that this would make our breasts invisible. But if you ever see pictures of yourself slouching and crouching in this way, guess what looks bigger? Your chest. Guess which hangs lower? Your breasts. It has the exact opposite intended consequence. Same for my gals who are very, very tall and decided that they were uncomfortable with their height. They also have this problem of slouching because they want to drop their inches by just a hair as if being 5'11 is magically going to disappear because you decided to slouch. And it has the unexpected consequence of drawing attention to you when you slouch in an exaggerated way. Especially if you're naturally tall and all eyes are going to be on you. And I'm pointing this out to you because I get it, number one, and I want you to know that there's nothing wrong with slouching or wearing cardigans or baggy t-shirts. But that draws me to our mindset portion of this program. Why are you doing that? Why are you wearing the baggy clothes that don't fit you? If it's a style choice and you like the way it looks stylishly, hey, own your style choice, boo-boo, you do you. But for my gals where it's not a style choice, you don't like the way you look and you're nitpicking yourself and you're hoping that a cardigan or a baggy shirt or trousers is going to hide your body because you're ashamed of it, then we've got some work to do. If you're slouching and crouching because you're too tall, you're trying to hide your breasts, we got some work to do. And I want you to do the style homework first. I want you to notice where you're doing this type of thing, where you're creating invisibility cloaks with your clothing or at least attempting to Because some of us are not even aware that this is what we've been doing. We don't look at pictures of ourselves. We don't allow pictures of ourselves to be taken. So we don't naturally see that this has become a habit of ours. So I want you to start recognizing when you reach for clothing that doesn't fit. I want you to ask yourself why. What part of your body are you trying to hide or minimize? And is the item you're choosing actually creating the intended effect or the opposite. And from a mindset standpoint, I want you to start really asking yourself why you're doing that. For most of you, it's not going to be a style choice. There's something else underlying there. And I want you to start doing the body image work to get past it. Because you can get past it. You can move through that. And then eventually, from a better mindset standpoint, you can make different style choices. But one always informs the other. There's an interplay there that I don't want you to ignore. So, your mission this week, Glam Gal, should you choose to accept it, from a style standpoint, is look for pictures of yourself. Do that picture homework. Stop and look at yourself in the mirror. 
Are you trying to hide a certain part of your body or an attribute of yours, such as your height, the breast size, your cup size, your tummy, your booty? Is there some part of you that you're trying to cloak? Now, I love a good cloak, but this is not the type of cloak we're talking about. We're not talking about something fabulous. We're talking about you trying to hide your body with some clothing or some posture that you're taking. Just be aware of that. And your mindset homework is to start asking yourself why you're doing that and to start practicing the body image makeover daily practice that I talk about in my workbook. I want you to start standing in front of that mirror and I want you to start recognizing the thoughts that are coming up for you and then practicing every day. This is my height. I'm, and then whatever height you are, if you're 5'11", 5'10", 6 feet tall, whatever it is, my darling glam gal, I want you to say the facts of your height and own that and repeat it to yourself over and over again until one day it clicks for you and it loses a stigma. It's not like, oh, I'm 5'11", you know, that's like a thing. And we're all supposed to recognize because you're 5'11", like that's some horrible thing. As opposed to being like, yeah, I'm 5'11". My shoe size is 10, or 11, or 12, or 13, or 5. My breast size is, name your cup size. My cup size is 38J. And then own that. Say the facts of it over and over and over again to yourself. Until you're just stating reality without any emotional stigma attached to it. Because you're creating the emotion with your thought about it. But if you acclimatize your brain to the fact that these are just numbers, they're just facts about yourself, they have no power other than the power you give them, then you'll start to see that that kind of shame will lighten a little bit. And that heaviness in your chest will lighten a little bit. Now, for those of you who are like, I have no idea what size I am because for so long you have been wearing clothing that does not fit you, I want you to start practicing the rule of three. It's very practical. It makes a game out of the dressing room. takes all the drama. You commit to yourself that whenever you go into a dressing room from now on, you're going to take in three sizes with you. The size you think you are, the size above that, and the size below that. No need for drama. This is a game. We're just going to see what size you are in this particular store on this particular day. It doesn't mean anything about you. So to recap, your style homework. Start looking for those invisibility cloaks that you've created in your wardrobe. Then start asking yourself why. And then repeat the facts of your clothing size, your height, whatever it is, in a numerical form to yourself every day and practice that until the stigma and the shame start to fade away. And, as always, practice the rule of three whenever you get into a dressing room. I wanted to keep it a little lighthearted today since we've been talking about shame and some heavier topics over the last few weeks. Now, I did reference the body image workbook in this podcast episode. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to judithgatan.com, click on the five-day challenge button, and sign up for the workbook so you can have access to it and learn how to practice this work every day on your own. If you need help, figuring out what size you are, feel free to sign up for a free coaching session at coach at judithkatan.com. Thank you for listening, Glam Gal. It's much appreciated. If you know another Glam Gal who may need to hear this episode, please feel free to share it. Also, please leave a review on iTunes. That way other Glam Gals can find the podcast. All right. Have a fabulous week. Let's get it. Miss J out. Thank you.